Okay guys, today we're going to take our first look at factoring polynomials. Before I even tell you what factoring is, there's something you need to do for me. Uh, I want to make sure that we're all good with multiplying binomials, and yes, I know these are pretty easy ones. Um, so multiply these four sets of binomials, uh, pause and come back when you're done. Okay, I'm not going to show any work or anything for these. I'm just going to jump straight to the answer. So if you miss something on the answer, uh, you know, maybe try it again. If that doesn't work, you know, you may need, to, may need to ask me about that, okay? So for this one, you should have gotten x squared plus 6x plus 8. This one should have been x squared plus 10x plus 21. This one should have been uh, x squared plus... Uh, minus 5x minus 36 and the last one should have been x squared also minus 5x minus 6. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Now I gotta tell you what factoring is first. Okay so think about what it would mean if you were uh, factoring prime numbers okay or uh, doing a factor tree for a number and breaking it down into prime numbers. You'd be turning that number into multiplication right? So if I asked you to break down the number 6, you would write that, oh, that's 3 times 2. Those are what its factors are, okay? Uh, so you're doing the same thing here. You've basically got this polynomial expression, okay? So we've got four, uh, when you multiply these out, you get four different quadratic trinomials. Uh, the process of factoring is basically going the opposite direction. It's if you started with this, trying to get back to this format. So going from the right side to the left side. Okay, assuming you didn't know what that left side was to begin with. So here's what I want you to think about. What do you see, uh, do you see any patterns or relationships uh, when you multiply out those binomials? What patterns or relationships do you see? Maybe pause, take a second to think about it. See what patterns you see uh, when you multiply out um, these binomials that look like this. Okay, so hopefully you've done that and you've thought of some patterns. Basically, the pattern that I see is that, uh, let's use this first one again as an example. So we got x squared plus 6x plus 8. These two numbers, they add to that middle number and they multiply to the last number. Okay, the same thing is going to be true all the way down. Okay, so here when we got x squared minus 5x uh, minus 36, negative 9 and positive 4 add to negative 5, and they multiply uh, to negative 36. So here's the idea. This pattern seems to work uh, for, some, uh, for these different polynomials here. So basically, here's what we're going to be doing. Uh, if I gave you a polynomial like this and we started the other way, okay, from our pattern up there, what we should realize is that the numbers that you put here and here, okay, we know it's got to start with x and x, okay, because that's, that's the only thing we know of that multiplies to x squared, okay. We could do x squared and 1, but... That, that, that's not going to work out, okay? We, we see from the pattern above that all of them started with x and x. Um, so w when we're trying to figure out what two numbers go there, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking for two numbers. They need to add to negative 6 and multiply to negative 7, okay? So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 7 and add to negative 6. Hopefully you quickly figured out that that's negative 7 and 1. It doesn't matter what order you put them in, but you're going to put a minus 7 in one parentheses and a plus 1 in the other parentheses. Okay, we could pretty much look at and kind of prove why this works out so well. Okay, a simple proof would just be to take two generic binomials like x plus a and let's assume they're both positive for right now. If we multiply this out, we'd get x squared plus ax plus bx plus a times b. We know these two are going to be like terms because they both have x, and the coefficient is going to be whatever a plus b is. 
So every single time something that's in this format, the two numbers that are here multiply to the last and add to the middle. That's our pattern we're looking for. Okay, when we factor po polynomials that begin with just x squared, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to the last and add to the middle. Okay, so again, one more time, here's what we're looking for. We know that these are two polynomials that are going to start with x and x. Okay, and in this particular problem, we're looking for numbers that multiply to 26, and we're looking for numbers that add to 15, also add to 15. Okay, and again, it makes sense that they have to multiply to 26, right? Because if we put like 22 and 3 in here, or let's, let's use ones that actually add to 15, that would make more sense, right? So let's say I used uh, 14 and 1 in here. Those add to 15, but if we multiply this binom these binomials back out, our last term is going to be a 14. It's not going to work. We need that last term to be a 26. Okay, so the two numbers I get are 13 and 2. Now, if you want to check your work, multiply these back out. If we multiply them back out, we get x squared plus 2x plus 13x plus 26, which is x squared plus 15x plus 26. Okay, so try this same pattern with the rest. The only thing that you need to be careful of is if there's subtraction before a number, that counts as a negative number. So try factoring these last three quadratic trinomials. Pause and then come back. Okay, so for this one, we were looking for numbers that multiplied to 25 and add to 10. That's 5 and 5. So we should get x plus 5 times x plus 5. For C, we are looking for numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. I may have gotten you on this one. This one you got to be sure you're very, very careful. We should get negative 6 and positive 1. Negative 6 and positive 1 multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. You can't use negative 3 and negative 2 because even though those add to negative 5, they would multiply to positive 6. And then the last one, uh, we're looking for numbers that multiply to negative 14 and add to positive 5. So we should get x plus 7 and x minus 2. That's the basics of factoring. Okay, this is, these, these are basic factoring problems, but th these are easy ones because they start with an x squared and not like a 2x squared or a 4x squared or a 12x squared. Okay, so we know uh, that there's a little bit of a pattern that's going to follow here. So uh, that's it for this one. Uh, do your little WSQ write-up. Make, make sure you ask a good question today. It's okay if there are, there are lots of questions. We'll have plenty of time to talk about this more uh, in class.